Into the Word, Into the World Bible Study. And this is Mark that we're going to be talking about today. In Mark, uh, we know that's the second of the Gospels. But it's the original one that was written. And it's believed to be that other Gospel writers had a copy of Mark in their hands. And therefore, they used quotes directly out of Mark many times and then elaborated on and added more information to fill out the story and fill out the life of Jesus Christ. But today what we're going to talk about in, in Mark, though, is uh, do you want to be a disciple? And that's a very profound question because in Matthew, in Matthew we find out that Jesus says something very profoundly. In Matthew chapter 28 and verse 16 and following, he says, Now the eleven disciples, and notice now, he calls them disciples and went to Galilee to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them when they saw that they that they when they saw him they worshiped him but some doubted and Jesus came and said to them all authority in heaven and earth has been given to me and here it is verse 19 go therefore and make disciples of all nations and so what's always intriguing is that Jesus said to make disciples and we in the church make church members and so the question today then is do you want to be a disciple or do you want to be a church member? Now, we know the qualifications of church membership, and they vary from church to church and denomination to denomination, but it basically goes like this. You come and you join and you come down to the front, you give your right hand, a fellowship to the uh, pastor, and then they have some new membership class or orientation class or new partners classes to teach you what their theology is, what their founding beliefs are, and then at some appointed time with some ritual, then you're indoctrinated as a member to the church. And that is where there's a party. Now let's get back to Matthew. The situation in Matthew was that the disciples had a misunderstanding of who Jesus was, who the Messiah was. And so because they misunderstood, there was conflict. And Jesus sometimes was frustrated with them on their misunderstanding. And so the question of the day then is for us, do you want to be a disciple or do you want to be a church member? And that's a very important decision to make because church membership might mean you just come down and you join the choir, you join the usher board, and you're a member. And as long as you give some money, we know that, plant a seed, then you're going to be a good member. But the question is, Jesus never asked them to make church members what he charged them was to make disciples. So let's take a look then at what some of the problems were for the disciples when Jesus was trying to explain to them what it was. They had a misunderstanding. They had a misunderstanding on what Jesus was as a Messiah, first of all. First of all, they thought that the Messiah was going to be a deliverer. He's going to be someone who is going to come in and deliver them back to the days of King David where they would have self-rule, they would be a sovereign nation, and they would have complete authority over their own goings and coming. That's what they were looking for with Messiah. But Jesus chose to come as a sufferer, and that didn't quite sit well with them. And there was some confusion and misunderstanding that Jesus had to then clarify for them what the difference was and what he had came for. So what we want to do is take a look at the, at the three steps of the journey of the disciples for them to become disciples as opposed to just being good church members. Now the first step was, and that was they misunderstood. Now, several times there was a misunderstanding on what Jesus was calling them to. What they wanted, which many times what we want, we want the glory. We want, oh, the honor. We want somebody to be able to call our name from the pulpit and better yet, give us a microphone and let us sing a solo. That's what we want. But that's not what he called for. That's not what a disciple is. And so then he had to straighten it out. Let's take a look at a couple examples. First of all, in Mark chapter 9, in Mark 9, we find that uh, what they really wanted and we, we get a sense of that in Mark 9, 33, and 34. And here's what the disciples want. In Mark chapter 9, verses 33 and 34, you want to turn to that. It says, Then they came to Capernaum, and when he, and when he was in the house, he asked them, What were you arguing about on the way? And then they go on to say, But they were silent. For one, on the way, they had argued one with another, 
who was going to be the greatest. That's what they were looking for. Who was going to be the greatest? They saw the multitudes and the crowds that were following Jesus, and they were chanting his name. The synagogues were being emptied, and they were coming out to see Jesus. And so they wanted a piece of the glory. They wanted the glory that he was getting, and that's what they were after. Also, we find it in Mark 10. Turn to Mark 10, verses 33, 35 through 37. We find again here. James and John also really had a desire to get the glory. In Mark chapter 10, verses 35 through 37, it says, Jesus and John, the sons of James and John, I'm sorry, the sons of Zebedee came forward to him and said to him, Teacher, we want to do we want to do for us, we want you to do for us what we asked of you. And he said to them, What is it you want me to do for you? And they said to him, Grant us to sit at your right hand and on your left hand in your glory. See, that's what they wanted. They wanted to sit on the right hand, which is a seat of power and authority, second in charge. And then on the left hand, who is the third in charge, they wanted some glory. They wanted some attention. They wanted the crowds to come and adore them like they saw the crowds adoring Jesus. And so there was a misunderstanding. And they misunderstood a lot of things. Another misunderstanding they had, and Jesus had to teach them, in Mark chapter 4. Now turn with me to Mark chapter 4, uh, verses 1 and following. And he talks about the sower in chapter 1. He says, again, he began to teach beside the sea. Uh, such a very large crowd gathered around him, and he got into the boat and then sat on the sea and sat there. While the whole crowd was beside beside the sea on the land. He began to teach them many things and parables, and in teaching them, he said, Listen, a sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seeds fell on the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Other seed fell on the rocky ground, and they did not do much. There was not much soil there, and they sprang up quickly, since it had no depth of soil. And when the sun rose, it was scorched, and since it did not have any root, it withered away. An, a, another seed fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it, and it yielded no gain. Other seeds fell into good soil and brought forth grain, growing up and increasing and yielding thirty and sixty and a hundredfold. And he said, Let anyone with ears to hear listen. And when he was alone, those who were around him along with the twelve disciples, asked him about the parable. And he said to them, To you who have given the secret of the kingdom of God, but to those outside, everything comes in parables. And then in verse 13 he says this, And he said to them, Do you not understand this parable? Then how will you understand all the parables? And so there was a problem with the disciples. They just misunderstood. They misunderstood who he was. They misunderstood what it was to be a disciple, and they misunderstood it was not about getting the glory, it was about something else, and that's what they didn't get. And so that was the first step, was their misunderstanding, misunderstanding of what God and what Christ had really been called for. The next step was that they started to get it. They started to click with them, and they started to get an understanding. So Peter was the first one to start to recognize who Jesus really was. Now, if you go to Mark, chapter 8, verse 27 and 29, Mark chapter 8, verse 27 through 29, then here's what you find. Peter declaration about who Jesus is. Jesus went on with his disciples to the village of uh, Caesarea and Philippi, and on the way he asked the disciples, who do people say that I am? And they answered him, John the Baptist, and others, Elijah, and still others, one of the prophets. And he asked them, but who do you say that I am? Peter answered him, you are the Messiah. And he sternly ordered them not to tell anyone about him. So now Peter's starting to get some understanding that he is the Messiah. He has seen him heal. He has seen him uh, raised from the, uh, those from the dead. He has seen the miracles that Jesus had done, and now he's starting to grasp that he is, a he is the Messiah. 
but they still are struggling with this whole thing of a suffering Messiah versus a conquering Messiah. And that's where we get back to that same question. Do you want to be a church member where you can sing solos, have your name in the record, and have people speak your name from the pulpit? We'll, we'll point you to one of the most important boards of the church, which handles the money of the church, and you'll, get, you'll be called chairman or president. Do you want the glory or do you want to be a disciple? And that's something totally different. So now Peter started to recognize and they started to see what it was to be a disciple. Now in Mark 8, verse 34 and 30, 34 through 38, we start to get a sense what it is to be a disciple. Start looking and see what it is, whether or not you really want to be a disciple or whether you want to be a church member. So in Mark chapter 8, verses 30, 34 through 38, here's what we find out. He called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, if any want to become my followers, let him deny himself and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? And some version says their soul. Indeed, what can you give in return for your life or for your soul? Those who are ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of them the Son of Man, meaning Jesus, will also be ashamed when he comes in his glory of his Father and with the holy angels. And so now we're still getting a sense now that there's not going to be this glory on earth. There's not going to be this glory uh, when it comes to being a disciple. It's about taking up a cross. Now, what does a cross mean? Okay, a cross was uh, one of the most despicable ways that one could die. A cross was one of the, the means in which uh, one suffered, uh, one was uh, taunted, one was ridiculed, one was put on public display, and you were unclothed, mostly unclothed, you had been beaten and flogged. It was the most despicable way that a Jew especially could ever die, and that's on a tree. And so to take up a cross then means that you're going to have to not get glory and not receive glory. You might receive honor for what you do, but you're not going to receive glory. To take up a cross means you take up a burden. I found out many times that when people in the church decide they want to do something in the church, and as an example, I remember in one of the churches I pastored, a woman came to me and said, well, you know, I always wanted to be an editor. I wanted to be a writer in a newspaper. And so now what I want to do, Pastor, I want to start a newsletter for our church because I always wanted to be a writer for a newspaper or an editor. And so I said, well, go ahead. Fine. Go ahead and do that. And so she took off and she started doing that. Boy, and she was enjoying herself. But then guess what? People didn't cooperate all the time. They didn't get their articles in on time. They didn't show up on time. She had to start calling people to pursue them and to keep up with them. And then she came to me and said, you know, this is far more than what I expected. I'm quitting. I'm giving it up. Well, you see, the problem was she took up a hobby. And a hobby is something that you do in your spare time and something you enjoy. She had not taken up a ministry. So she misunderstood what it was to be a disciple and do a ministry versus what it was to be a, take a hobbyist and take up a hobby and so, something you enjoy. And so just as the, as the, as the disciples in Jesus' time misunderstood what it was to be a disciple, we sometimes misunderstand what it is to be a disciple. So now my question still to you is, do you want to be a church member or do you want to be a disciple? Okay, let's continue on. So we find out then that there was a misunderstanding when it came to that. Let's take another one. Now let's go to Mark chapter 10 now. Mark chapter 10 and go 35 through 40. Mark chapter 10 verses 35 through 40. And here we go. All right, we read part of that, but let's continue on. James and John, sons of Zebedee, came forward to him and said, Teacher, we want to do you to do for us what we ask. And he, and he, said, he said to them, What is it you want me to do for you? And they said to him, Grant us to sit one on the right hand and one on the left hand 
in your glory. That's what they want, the glory. But Jesus said to them, you do not know what you're asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I drink or be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? They replied, we are able. Then Jesus said to them, the cup that I drink, you will drink. And the baptism in which I baptize, you will be baptized. But to sit on my right hand or my left hand is not mine to grant, but it is for those whom, whom, to whom has been prepared. Okay, so he tells them then, this is not going to be a glorious situation. It's not going to be sitting on his right hand or his left hand. It's not for him to choose or to decide. I want to go now to Luke, the writer of Luke uh, chapter 14. And we want to see what we, what we find here. In chapter 14 of Luke, verse 26, we see something else. This is called the cost of discipleship. Again, my question is, do you want to be a disciple or do you want to be a member of the church? Here's what it is to be a disciple. Now, large crowds were traveling with him, and he turned and said to them, Whoever comes to me and does not hate father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, even life itself cannot be my disciple. Are you sure you want to be a disciple or would you rather be a church member? Because <laughs> nobody's going to ask you to give up your life to be a church member. You'll come to a nice church. The air conditioning will be set just right. You can pick whichever pew you want to sit in and all the pews will be padded. We'll have glorious singing and good musicians and an excellent sermon. And we'll start right on time and we'll try not to hold you too long. That's what it is to be a church member. But remember now, Jesus said to make disciples not church members. And this what it is, the cost of being a disciple. Now let's go back to Mark again, chapter 3. If you would, go back to Mark with me, chapter 3, verse 35. Three, thir Mark 3, 35. And see what is said there. 3, 35 of Mark. Okay, it says, Then his mother and his brother, verse 31, then his mother and his brothers came, and standing outside, they sent to him, this is Jesus they're talking about, and called him. A crowd was sitting around, and they said to him, Your mother and your brother and sisters are outside asking for you. And he replied, Who are my mothers and my brothers? And looking at those who sat around him, he said, Here are my mother and my brothers. Whoever does the will of God is my brother and sister and mother. So then what we have to do then to be a disciple is you have to be willing to do the will of God. You have to be willing to do the will of God. Now what does that mean to do the will of God? That may mean sacrifice. That may mean that you are inconvenienced. It very likely will mean that you'll have some difficulty. Very probably it will mean there'll be some people who disagree with you. It means that you're going to have to deal with disagreeable people sometime. But it is just that, to be a disciple, is to receive ultimately the glory. Let's take one more, one more look over here, and this is Romans chapter 8. If we look at Romans chapter 8, and we're just about done here, short class today. Romans chapter 8 is where we want to go. In Romans 8, verse 17 Verse, we'll start with verse 14. Okay, verse 14. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you received a spirit of adoption. When we cry Abba, which is an endearing term for Papa or, or Daddy, or, and then still don't say Abba or Father, it is that very, spirit, that very spirit bearing witness and with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If, in fact, we suffer, now get that word, suffer with him so we may also be glorified with him. So that's what takes us to the final point then, the final question. Do you want to be a church member or do you want to be a disciple? 
the disciples of Jesus wanted to be glorified. They, they wanted to receive his glory, which means they wanted to be able to sit on his right hand or his left hand. And they wanted to be able to have the multitudes come to them and call out their name as they called out Jesus and, and exclaim over all that they could do. They want glory poured upon them. But he says, to be my disciple, however, then you have to be willing to suffer with him to receive the glory. So then what is the glory? The glory is a sense of knowing that you are a child of God. The glory is a sense of knowing that you have the gift of everlasting life. The glory is knowing that you will be with God in heaven. The glory is knowing that you have blessed someone else's life that you've helped someone along the way, that you've picked up someone who was down, that you set an example for a younger person to emulate and to follow, as Paul said many times, imitate me as I imitate Christ. The glory is having and making a difference in someone else's life. It's doing for the least of these. Because remember what Jesus said, that what you do for the least of these, you have done unto me. And for those who have done to the least, then you receive his glory, you receive his kingdom, you receive the opportunity when this life is over to be on in his kingdom in heaven. So therefore, do you want to be a church member? So we'll put you on a board, we'll give you a title, we'll make you feel important. Or do you want to be a disciple? Which sometimes means you have to suffer with him. But what it means most importantly is that you'll receive the glory of God. You'll receive the approval of God. You'll be one of his children whom he loves. And then Jesus said, not only did I come that you have life and have it abundantly, but then when you seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, then all that other things, all the other things that you aspire to, all the other things that you long for, they'll be added unto you because our heavenly father gives to his children and his children are his disciples all right we thank you for being in the class today we hope that you receive something good today that you might nurture that you might think about and ponder about we encourage you to go to the website on youtube look for lewis metropolitan on the on the website take a look at our our, our other classes and give us some responses back and we will be able to respond back to you with any questions you have all right be blessed and be a disciple, not a church member.